Hello, my name is Martin and this is 3D Printing Iceland. In this video I'm going to unbox the Creality CR10S printer I received in the mail. I bought this printer after having the order on hold for quite some time because of the GPL violation that Creality hadn't sorted out. But thanks to Naomi Wu or the Sexy Cyborg on Twitter, she sorted out the GPL issue and Creality released their source code and I was holding off the order until that happened. So when that was sorted out, I placed the order and I got this sent from China and it took only a few days to arrive from China to Iceland. But I'm gonna do an unboxing and assemble the printer. It is a simple installation, but I want to do a video on it nevertheless. So let's get started after the intro. So there's nothing left to do than open up the box and see if everything is inside. Yeah, for some reason the audio on this profile in OBS was disabled, so I didn't record any audio of this part, but I'm just going to talk afterwards on over the video. So inside the box was the, was the main body of the printer. It's well packed in this foam and the print bed is fixed to the, to the bottom part and then inside this box in the lower part of the box is a tape, and some parts, and the electronic box, and the C-axis country. And I noticed that every part of the packaging is very well packed, and the foam is cut to correct shape, so there's no rattling in the box, so everything was really well packed. There are a few zip ties that have to be removed, but like you see, there's foam on the lead screws for the C-axis. So it was very good packaging. And I'm just showing from the inside, everything is cut out to, to fit perfectly. So the printer basically comes in two parts, uh, the country and the, the base. Then the third part is the electronic box with the wires. Some of the wires are fixed to the box and some will connect afterwards. And then I'm just checking the voltage setting. It's, it was set at the correct voltage, 220 volts. So if you're in the States and receive this from the Europe warehouse or the Chinese warehouse, you might have to check the voltage and set it to 110. Um, it has uh, the blue stripes to put on the frame. I'm not sure if I'm going to put this on. Um, the brackets for the country. Uh, some instruction manual. Quick start guide. A power cable with a correct form for Europe. So it's correct. The housing for the filament sensor, some hardware, uh, memory card, filament, some white PLA, 1.75 millimeters, a USB cable. needle to clean out a uh, clock um, also put my finger to the end there's a this thing on the end and the needle was standing out a little bit and when I grabbed it I got my finger punctured and some blood <laughs> so there has been blood uh, on this very beginning uh, scraper yeah I'm gonna put a band-aid on this. <laughs> so remember to be careful when you pick this part out. 
and uh, it got, but it's very tiny needle, so it wasn't serious. And some tools and zip ties, a bottom tube, uh, the filament holder. The guarantee sticker. You can put your name in and, and probably send this over to them if you want. Qualified certificate. Certificate. Yeah. So that was inside this box. So I noticed here in the harder pack there's an extra nozzle. Um, it's good to have an extra nozzle. So this is my problem. And I get something new. My cats are so curious; they want to take over. <laughs> and I have two cats on my table now, <laughs> so I have to let them sniff on everything, and then they'll probably leave me alone. But the first thing I have to do is to remove the packaging material from the heat bed. Here you can see the the cable has a as a bracket here, um, in the earlier versions, the cable was not with this item, so this was coming included with the printer now. So they they made some changes from the previous versions. So this is a good addition. So now the the part doesn't need to be printed; it just comes with it. So that's a good thing. Just gonna align everything up. So now there. Uh, bolts that go underneath. There's a zip tie that I have to remove. And also on the other side there are zip ties. Those zip ties holding the lead screw, and those packaging material things. Those are the nuts I had to tighten up earlier to remove the wiggle. Um, here you can notice there's a insulation material on the bottom side of the heat bed.
was just checking if everything was in place. I'm gonna tighten up those bolts. are in. And the next step is to put those brackets on. And here on the left side, sensors. And on the other side is just the T bracket. So now when the country is on, I'm gonna adjust. I'm gonna put those brackets on. And you have to align the nuts and put them in. And they seem to rotate into correct orientation when you tighten the, the bolt. Let's do the other side. This side has the switch for the C axis and stop. So now the country is, is ready. At this point the mic was also disabled and here I'm just checking the frame and it seems to be very rigid and was very stable on the table and there was no wobbling on the country or, or anything. Um, everything, the, the motor mounts and, and the x-axis mounts for the hot end are pretty stable. And just checking checking everything at this point I notice the belts are in line the extrusions so they're the belts are hidden in a way and they are pretty tight and now with the upgraded frame there's a belt tensioning system on the y-axis and the x-axis belts so you don't have to print out things to Tighten the belts. So the next step is to put on the spool holder. Um, there are those bolts that go in here. screws on here so the other side was a bit loose and I turned this around and then it's a good fit 
So the next step is wiring and basically just tell you to connect everything. And yeah, one step I missed in the country installation is to connect the bottom tube that goes in here. It's just a simple push in. And here I put on the, the filament sensor. It is just a bracket that slides on here. And there's no screw holding it back. And now I have this bundle, bundle of cables to connect. And the heater for the extruder is one connection going to the box. And there's only one way this can go. And this connects to the box. Also the cable from the heat bed can only go one way. That's here. So those two wires that have the main current are with those connectors. The rest of the connectors are just those plug-in types. So here's a Y-axis marked C-axis. Axis. X-axis, X-axis, E-axis, so this can only go in one way. And the Y-axis motor, this cable is marked filament detector and there's a, like a terminal that you have to take off can plug it in. This is marked C. So this is C motor. Uh, this is the longer one. So this one is, is going over here. So there are two cables with the C marking. One is just for the stepper motor on the other side and that's a longer cable and it goes over here. Then the other one has a C axis end stop connector to it also, so that goes on the other side over here. In. And the last cable that is called E and X, so this is the X motor, X axis motor, and this is X axis end stop. Now everything is, is connected and I'll have to do some cable management. Now everything is connected and I'm gonna connect the power and I'm turning it on for the first time and hopefully nothing bad will happen. So CR10, 10S and I'm getting a temperature reading from the hot end on the bed. Um, that is Good, good sign. So the first step is to preheat.
heat PLA. I'm gonna just try this filament sample out. This is the first time I've used a Bowden style printer. Both my proofs are direct drive, so I haven't used a Bowden style before. So now the temperature is 180 degrees. So I'm going to put in the filament and see if it extrudes. Now it goes in. There's some black filament coming out of the nozzle. And now it's turning into grey, and so the white filament is somewhat lighter. I'm going to increase the temperature to 200. I'm going to put on the glass bed. And I noticed on the corner they are rounded off, so it's a nice, nice finishing of the glass. I'm just using those clips to fasten the bed back on. There's still a tiny amount of wiggle. I'll have to check those nuts again. Now I have to run through the bed leveling process. Prepare to auto home. So now it tells me to disable steppers. Um, get a piece of paper, adjust the knob at the other side. quite difficult to turn those default knobs and one of the things I've seen people print are bigger knobs and I'm gonna put those on when I got the printer started I think this is close enough for the first start so I'm gonna find the empty cart and see what I can find on the cart it includes a USB reader, so you can use this as a reader for the card on your computer, so that's nice. So now I started printing out the test G-code, there's a cut G-code, and I'm going to print that, and the bed is heating, so it's printing a raft underneath. Might have to adjust the layer height, it's a bit thick layer.
Yeah, now the the first print uh, started away yesterday, and I had to go, uh, and was no, the video yesterday. But uh, this was the first print, and it was taking a very long time, and I stopped it. But I've done uh, several prints, and did this test to test out the bed level, and I, uh, I did uh, put on some screws here to help me adjust the bed leveling the small underneath the beds are quite difficult to get to and I put those on but uh, the initial build went fine and when I left you uh, when I left the video recording yesterday I was printing this print out it came out great and I've done several tests prints and I'll show you those in a in a separate initial thought video but uh, as far as the build goes it was very easy to assemble and put on the country and, and lock everything down and it was very easy to, to do and the only thing that was giving me trouble were the, the bed leveling nuts underneath they are very small and difficult to reach so I printed those uh, larger knobs and put them on and that was the only only issue I had with the build, so to speak. And I'm gonna do an initial thought video after a while. I'm gonna print a few things and, and get used to the printer and getting in the settings for the slicer. Uh, I found a profile online for slicer for the printer and it seems to be working quite well. So for this initial build video, this will be it. I hope you liked the video and thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.